Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Hmm. Spring Boot and all of these weird property files. How should I organize my property files? This is what this video will be about. Can I use something named uh, called uh, Profile Groups? Yes, spoiler alert, you can and you should because uh, it, is, it will give you a much better overview than the, than the situation we have today. First of all, should I use properties or should I use, use YAML files? I can tell you to begin with, there will always be someone in your in your group that will, uh, that will argue that uh, YAML just looks so much nicer and so much beautiful. And it's always it's, it's, it's much newer and fancy, so why, not, why don't we use YAML? So just begin with, just uh, ca 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 capitulating that one and then say, okay, we are going to use YAML files because it is okay. It's, it is, um, it will give us the same results. So the situation is that we have this, uh, yeah, I'll just copy this right here to YAML. Actually, it should actually be possible to convert it, but I guess not. So I guess not. So I'll just create one YAML file right here. And then we, as you probably have guessed, I'll create a lot of YAML files. And then I will show you how you could organize these to actually make sense. Because usually you would have, yeah, to begin with, you would just have one setting like this. This is no problem, right? We only have one configuration. Uh, we only have one application that, um, we only have one application. We only have one application, the properties file that we have to, uh, that we have to handle. So no problem at all. But, uh, but what happens, what, ha what happens later on? What happens later on, right? I'll just, I'll show you what happens later on. Now there was an error right there. Consumer, let me just convert this group ID and then Mike. Okay. Consumer, group ID, Mike, like this. Yes. I think. And then colon right there. Yes. I think that we are there now. Okay. So, and I'll, I'll delete my promises file. So, the first thing you'll do is just say, okay, I'll, um, we will just use a YAML file in, in our project. That's fine. The next thing that will happen is that then your colleagues, of course, maybe yourself also, will actually create something called new profiles. So you know, sometimes you want to start up, you want to run something with a, a H2 a memory database, then you will create one named H2 right here. And then you will set up your all of your H2 specific stuff in that one. And then you will create a new one. And then maybe you need to connect to a rapid MQ. Uh, maybe, maybe we need to connect to a rapid in queue, uh, queue system, and then you want to create one like this. And maybe you want to create some fake security to so you can test all of your roles that you have in your in your um, in your project, right? And then you want you also want when you're running out on a server, to deploy it on your de development environment or maybe on your production environment. Then you want uh, real security, real security like this. This could be something like with a Google Web Token or something like that, while your fake security, there could be basic authentication, for instance, if, the, if that's what you want. So now you can see we have all of these files right here. And at the same point, then, of course, you have something that is, uh, when you come to your, uh, to your deployed environment, environment, yeah. then maybe you have some special uh, locking that you want to set when you deploy stuff in the development environment, or you want to, de to deploy something on your production environment, maybe you want some... Uh, some other locking there. You you might maybe you only want error locking when you are deploying to your to your production environment. So you can see right here we get all of these all of these uh, YAML file all of these profiles, and then uh, and then the, the, a new developer comes in and he wants to start up. Uh, he wants to start and help of course to you code, and he asks, okay, what should I do here? Which, which profile do I, do do we need to activate? Uh, in in order to yeah, so to make this work, you probably also have made something called uh, application maybe local for local development, and then you could, then people know that if you want to code something local, then, then they can use local. Um, your other developers they probably know that they have to say that the, the local development profile needs to be active. Uh, and then maybe they also the, the everybody knows that they have to also add the H2 database, and they also need to add the embedded. I'll just create a new one. Embedded um, Kafka. Maybe this embedded Kafka profile also is here. So everybody knows this, except of course for the new developer that comes in. He or she needs to, to also to to learn this. Of course, you could write this in the conference page. Embedded Kafka. 
but it is still a mess, as you can see right here. That means that when you're deploying stuff on the server, maybe you are, uh, maybe you have the environment dev, uh, profile active. You you also have the real security profile active because uh, yeah, we we need real security when we come out on the uh, on, on on the real the, the environments. So how do we solve this mess so we actually get something that can actually be used for something? My suggestion is that you use something called you, that you would only use your application the YAML file. You will only use this for. Uh, you will only use this for. You will only use your application and YAML files for um, for groups. So if you have Spring profiles group, there's something called groups. It was implemented in Spring two four. Here I can create some groups. This means that um, when I'm when I want to code something locally, so this could be I could have one group that is local. This local group um, would actually have the H2 profile uh, enabled. It will have the fake security profile enabled. It will also have the maybe the better a better Kafka. So now we have a local setup that I I can just run with Active Profile local. Actual local, uh, actual profile local, and then I will actually activate all of these profiles right here. But this means that I can look one place, and then I can get an overview of uh, of what we actually uh, want. Then we can have something for the yeah, for the deployed environment. We can, we can maybe name this deployed. Then uh, there for the uh, development environments, and then we can say that on the deployed there we need um, yeah we need another database and hits true. We might need a Postgres database right here. Postgres. So we also have a YAML for that, of course. I know I misspelled it. Um, I'll just rename it right there. Postgres like this. So again, here in my application, the YAML files, then I will create a deployed dev like this. Then I will say, okay, we need to Postgres. We need to have real security also on the dev environment. Or maybe it's fake security. Let us say fake security. So I need these ones right here. And that's actually it. Um, and then I can copy this line right here. Control D for duplicate. And I can say deploy it to production like this. And maybe you also want a, uh, maybe you also want the environment, environments enabled also here. And then I can have the environment production right here. Then you have Postgres. In this situation, I want real security. So right here, I actually, now I have, Instead of having a, a big mess, now I actually have three groups, so I know when I code locally, then I will just activate the local profile. When I code, when I deploy to development to my development environment, then I use that profile to deploy there. When I, when I, uh, yeah, it's the same in production. When I, when I create a deployed version for, um, for production, then I will just activate this one profile right here, and then all of these profiles would be activated automatically. That's much better. It's much. Uh, it's, it's awesome, right? And we can also have one for end-to-end -end testing, end-to-end -end testing, or maybe Selenium test, Selenium test. So this is for for when you create those. Uh, yeah, for, for when you want to to, to see that your end-to-end -end test actually works, you have some Selenium tests that test your UI and uh, your UI hits your backend and everything works fine now. Maybe again you want H2. It could actually be that you want the fake security also, fake security like this. So that means that again for each for each need that we have for each purpose, we will create one group. So you should never, whenever you try to run something with more than one profile, then it's because you were too lazy, or maybe you did not know that you could use groups. Actually, that's but it's usually the 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 the, 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 the letter right. <laughs> You're not lazy. It's just because you have not created a group yet, so you'll just go and create that group. So as as you have lost the game, if you if you need to activate more than one profile, then game over. You have to. You just lost one of your one of your computer imaginary lives because uh, uh, it will it will waste all of your your whole your whole team's time, and you that's not good. So then you go back and say, okay. How can I how can I improve my game? And you can improve by your game by creating groups like this, and then only activate uh, one group, and then uh, that group will actually end up with multiple um, profiles. You have to know that the group that you actually mentioned will also be uh, considered a profile that is it will be activated. Just for fun, now I now I'll go to my runtime configuration right here. Then I will say. I'll just say local because uh, that is my name of my group, right? So I'll say local, okay, and then I press play and let us see what happens now because there is some cool output that we need. Active profiles, look here, 
Here we go. Let's look, 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 look. It is beautiful, right? This is gold. Look, look, look. The following four profiles are active. Yum. That that luck, that piece of luck that tastes so good. It's full of calories. It, it tastes really, really good. Look there. Full, uh, the following four uh, profiles are, are active, local, H2, fake security, embedded Kafka. Okay, but how can that be? I only activated one that is local. No, it's because it uses the group right here. So that's why all of these four profiles are active. Cool, nice, very smart. I have a mess out here, but I have organized my mess in my uh, application.yaml file, the, the one without any profile on it. My default, uh, this is my default profile, right? Uh, okay, so that is, do that right away. You, you probably haven't done this, so go do that right away. You probably have multiple profiles uh, in your Spring Boot project that you're working on right now. Pause the video, go do that. When you're done with that, come back to the video again, because there's one more point, and that is that a, a lot of times you would actually have something that is common for all of these groups right here. So that means that you actually, you should actually create a common profile also. How you organize your your profiles is of course up to you, and this is um, yeah, and, and that can be done a lot of way. Maybe you have your um, maybe you have that uh, what is it the, the context the context path right here the server context path right here that is uh, Mike's app. So this Mike's uh, it sounds wrong if I write Mike's backend right here. So <laughs> so I write uh, Mike's uh, API right here. <laughs> Instead, so here we have uh, Mike's API. That is a context path. I, I know this. This is this is going to be a context path on all of my, uh, in on, on all of all of my situations. Uh, so I want, uh, yeah, I want that to be the context path. Um, so the, how can I then add that? I can. I'll, then I'll just write here, common here to all of my groups. Common, 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 like that. Can I call if can you can you mention other groups in your group? You should not do that. So it doesn't matter whether you can do that or not. You should not make spaghetti here. You should you should not mention another group, and then that group maybe might might mention another group again. You should not don't do that. Do not make spaghetti. Make this nice and tight, and make it um, yeah make it something that it can actually uh, that gives us all, all a good overview. Um, do not code. Do not program spaghetti. So do also do not have your do not have your profile groups. Uh, containing spaghetti either right yeah i think there were some good points right there so this is a spring profiles group and let us just try to run another group right here i'll just run that in the configurations i'll just take a copy of my runtime configuration right here and then instead of that weird long name i'll actually just name it deployed dev and actual profiles deployed dev right there okay we stop the existing one, and then we press play on the new one, and then we want to see the active profiles should now have been changed, right? So let us see if we can find the beautiful output right here. Yes, look right there. Deployed there, common, environment there, uh, Postgres, and fake security. And as you probably know right now, this deployed there, you don't have to have this environment there right here. You can actually just rename your environment deal that you have right here this one right here you can just be renamed to deployed deal, right there because this is actually also a profile right so you don't have to you don't have to have this environment production right here you can also rename that environment production and what but what happens mike if you if there, if there are no property file for um for a profile nothing happens that's that's totally fine there, there will just be no properties uh, picked up from that uh, from that profile. <clears throat> okay, but Mike, why would I have a profile without a, a property file? You would have that because sometimes in your code, in your Spring Boot code, you, you would actually activate some code. You would have a, like a profile, a, add profile, and then uh, the name of the profile on top of your uh, Java classes, and then you would have some code that is only active uh, with certain uh, profiles and some code that is uh, inactive with, with certain profiles. That is why you would have profiles without in without a property file associated with it. Yeah. So what was this? This was um, deployed, deployed production right here, right? So here we have deployed production, and um, this will look in this file right here. The deployed production will look in common. 
okay so what, what what about if i have the same property in multiple files then what mike if you have done that then you have uh, again then you lost another life in uh, in a game uh, you're down to one life now if you have three had three lives to begin with you go back and uh, you go back and, and and see what what did you do wrong in your game what you did wrong right here is actually that you had the same property mentioned multiple places you should not try to use the all right system so uh, so uh, so all depending on which order that you place these uh, profiles in then then you would have a certain uh, then you would have some then you would have a certain resulting uh, properties uh, property values right you should not do that because it, it does not give any overview it would just mess up it, everything let's say that you have this common right here but you you have this and uh, that you have where you have this context part right here then you have a weird situation when you go into production then the context part would actually um uh, the context part would actually change. This means that then on your group, then you would actually take out common. You will not use common anymore. Common should only be used uh, when it is actually common for all of the uh, for, for all of all of your profile groups. So you should not have the same property mentioned in in um, in in multiple profiles that is in the same group then you have then you have not done your work um, then you've not made it correctly right so then you've not done it right then you have to go back and then maybe create you can also create some other ones that could also be something like with the a, a deployed common so that means that for all of the of the uh, on the deployed systems maybe you have another uh, server context uh, than you know, when you run locally maybe when you run locally you do you don't want a server um, context you just want it to be uh, yeah, forward slash because then it's easier when you when you start up your browser or whatever to, to test it uh, yeah so that's that's totally up to you how you organize right so but do not have the same property in in multi in, in multiple fi uh, multiple profiles that is on the same group it's okay that you have a h2 right here uh, or maybe it's okay that you have a fake security uh, that has some properties that is actually also in the real security. That's that's okay. Uh, maybe, maybe you have some role configuration or yeah, something like that. That you that is actually common for these two right here. If it is always common, then of course, then you could create a new profile from that. You can also choose just to mention it in both. That's totally up to you how you organize your uh, properties. Just don't mention the same property twice for the same group as you have it right here. If you use this best practice that I just made up myself, then uh, <laughs> then uh, I think you'll be happier. I think you'll be a happier person in general. You'll be very, very happy. Your team will be happy. They will look at you as they'll, they'll see you as, as a person that actually knows what quality is. They will, they'll see you. If you're a junior developer, they will see you as a tech lead. If you're a senior developer, they will also see you as a tech lead. So do that. Never. If if you see some mess on the floor, if you see some, if you see mud on the floor, then take a broom, wipe it, and then show everybody how you did. Because then your um, the other people in your team will also then um, they, they will also they will actually feel that they can also wipe away mud whenever they see some other mud. That could be a whole other situation, right? Then they will also they will know where the broom is, and then we can actually go and, and sweep sweep away the mud. Yes, of course, you would also probably need some water to wash the floor. Depends on what kind of floor it is. Is it dirt floor? Is it uh, something with tiles? Is it something with uh, linoleum? Then it's quite easy, right, to handle. Do you have a robot to clean? Then, okay, now it's uh, now, now I'm out of um, uh, attention. That was not, uh, yeah, uh, this, yeah, that was not what I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about uh, yeah, the Spring Boot. Profiles, groups. I have just uh, I've, I've just made your, your your life easier as a programmer. I'm pretty sure it's, it, it definitely if you are using uh, Spring Boot and, and making Spring Boot applications. Should we try a third one just for fun? Selenium test. Copy him. I'll stop this again. And edit configurations. Copy. And again, I'm creating. I'm, I'm saying active profile, and then I just name this Selenium test. Then I press OK, and then we press Start, and then we should see Selenium test, Common H2, and Fake Security as the active uh, profiles. So they're right here. The following four profiles are active, Selenium test, Common H2, Fake Security. Quite cool. There's one more. Um, there's one more 
there's one more point right here that is important. For each of these groups, you should have a banner.txt file. A banner.txt file. So let us just create that file. Banner.txt. And you need to create one for each of the groups. So this means that the, and, and the, the content of the banner.txt file is actually um, the name of your group actually. So we have one, we have these ones right here. So I'll just copy it so I can remember. So I have these banners right here. So I'll create one red. Yeah. So this just so I can remember which one to create. Local, banner local. Banner selenium, selenium test. And this is actually quite important. And you'll start show you why. So then we have banner deployed like this. Yes. Then we have one uh, deployed production, then a deployed production, like this. Add. So now I'm, I'm not, now I'm deleting all of the content because I just used that as a to-do list. So now I'll, so now we have all of these banners. There are no content right there. On my web page, there will soon be a banner uh, creator. Um, so, but until then. Just search for so just uh, just Google for Spring Boot uh, banner, and then you'll find some place where you can actually create. There's a generator right here. It's actually on uh, springhow.com right here. This page right here. Then you can actually go create one that's called Name Local. I will have the same on my web page soon. And my web page, if you don't know it, is codeinvestigator.com right here. I have this page right here with a lot of uh, stuff, some data format, security, etc., etc. There will also be one for. Um, uh, there will also be one for uh, how to create banners is which for spring uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll push the code later um, so here we have local.txt here local and you should also have if you uh, if you want to you could also have your the name of your application on top so that means that you can have the yeah, mics API like this preview copy so then we go back right like this. Yeah, Mike's uh, API right there, and then you go copy it to the rest. Copy it to the rest of the banners files, and then in the bottom of the banner file right here, then you add like deployed dev. Deployed dev. I think I'll stop here, uh, but you you know the yeah you you can see what what I'm doing right here. I'm creating one deployed dev right here. So I have local local is okay and deployed dev is okay. That's okay for now. I'll not uh, waste your time but by creating all of these. So now we have these banners that text files and and why are they important? They are important because if suddenly I start up uh, deployed dev. Let us say that I start up that up locally, maybe by mistake, maybe because I want to debug, then I should not be, you see right now it says spring right here and it also says the version right there. Then we should actually, um, your, your, your group file, it should say, it should name the banner location. Here you will say banner local. And we do the same for, Deploy dev. Deploy dev right there. So now we have for dev. Let me just restart the application so we can actually see that it works. So look what happens here. Mike's uh, API deployed dev. So create that banner. It does not take that long as you saw right there. Because now I actually know when I'm and I sit in late hours and I'm tired and or maybe early hours if you get up early then. Then you would actually know. Ah, okay. I started up deployed dev. That's why it does not react uh, like like I expected to react. So let me just create. Let me just go to my local. My local setup instead. So then I'll press local and then I'll start my server once again. It can also be the other way around that you actually suddenly when you look out on your deployed server somewhere, then you see the log file and it says Mike's API and then local. Then you mean, okay, someone uh, somewhere in, the, in the, your CI pipeline, you actually uh, mentioned the wrong uh, profile group because uh, <laughs> because it has the wrong banner text right here. Right? So I think banner text is actually very important because uh, this is actually what you see 
Of course, you can also see this line right here, but it's much more difficult to, to read. And of course, the first profile that you will, if you follow this uh, group principle that, that I just showed you right there, then the first, the first, uh, the first profile you, you will always see is the group. So this is the profile group, actually. It's both a group and it's also a profile. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, and thank you to all of you who actually take the time to give me a comment. It's, uh, it means a lot. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.